What's up, Tim Sykes, Millionaire Mentor and Trader here um, in Vegas for a few days speaking at a conference. Thank you, Thrive, for having me. Excited to meet everybody. Um, still giving my weekly webinars. So every single week, I give weekly webinars to my top students, to my challenge students. If you click below, you can apply for my challenge. This is where all my newest millionaires are coming from. Um, so we're going to go live in a second, um, and I will do... Uh, some Q and A, and also um, you know potentially some live trading. It's a Friday afternoon, just to put it into perspective. Um, so I trade a little differently, as I'll explain. Can they hear me? Does it sound good? We got Pasqualito here filming. Hey everybody! And uh, we'll see where this goes. Let's see. Go live now. I'm not the best at tech, so we usually have tech issues. Uh, let's see. I'm in the challenge chat room. Can you guys hear me? Can you see my screen? Say yes. If you can look at that. Someone Kyle said here for webinar waiting for the technical difficulties. No technical difficulties today, Kyle. Sorry to disappoint you. I think, can they hear me? Shoot. I didn't listen to how cocky I was and no one can even hear me. Okay, good. I got a few yeses. Cool. Um, no, we have Pasqualito here today. So less technical issues. I don't know if this is going to be as as clear as the other webinars. I actually had to go back to my broken laptop. Um, not the one with the missing keys. I actually have three laptops. So I'm back to like the middle laptop because the new laptop, for whatever reason, laptops hate me. It just, it, it won't charge. Pasqualito can confirm. I confirm. Right? Someone says yes, but the sound is terrible. Someone says loud and clear. Make up your mind. You guys tell me. Say good or terrible for sound. Let's take a poll. So far, everyone else says the sound is good. Is that one person. The one person where the sound is not good, I suggest taking off your, your headphones, maybe. Or doing less shrooms. I don't know. Whatever the issue is. Everyone else says it's good, so that's good. Um, slow day for me today, you know, basically break even. Um, the bounces just didn't happen for me, you know, and, and sometimes that happens. Uh, OSCI, you know, I went, I got the panic uh, that I wanted. The interesting thing here is on OSCI yesterday, I warned people not to take it overnight. Um, I warned that, you know, we had a lot of one day runners that, that also tanked on day two. Um, then late day it broke out and everyone was like, everyone who was long was like, shut up Sykes. You always underestimate it. And literally it broke out for about a minute before the breakout failed. And this was such a good trap by promoters. I even said it in chat. I was like, that's dirty. You know, that's, that's a dirty thing to do to like tease people with a breakout and then, that usually leads to a panic the next day. So I was right about the panic today, um, but it just didn't really bounce. I guess if you timed it perfectly, you could have gotten it from 25 to 28, but I didn't time it perfectly. Um, I had a small loss and that's okay. Um, you know, some people say like, why do I dip by it when it was just a one day runner? You don't know which plays are gonna be one day runners or not. Okay, like obviously it's better to, to dip by a multi-day runner or a multi-week runner. That's higher odds. But today's Friday. I'm going to be more speculative on Friday. And it's important to note that like you don't know if the one-day runner is going to turn into a two-day runner. And sometimes, oftentimes, like we saw on ELEK, which was my biggest win of the week. Um, you know, right now it's tanking. But... It had the big one day run. It had a morning panic on day two, and that led to this nearly 100% spike on day two. Even though it finished red on the day, this was an amazing day two spike. So I will always try, you know, these big one day runners, especially this week where we're seeing more OTC runners um, one day, two days, three days. So you got to know what kind of market we're in. You know, I'm filming this in November of 2021 for some perspective. Back in, uh, you know, September or October, I don't know if I would have, you know, done all that because it was a little slower. By the way, I'm watching IGEX 
Um, they're supposedly going to have some news next week. What was the news? I missed it. They, I think they tweeted this morning. Stocks and Trade Breaking News uh, posted it. Where was it this morning? So on Fridays, I'm looking for potential weekend plays um, because they, you know, they tend to go up over the weekend. Promoters hype them up. Um, this is what they tweeted. Writing the positive announcements for next week and the next. Let's see what he's writing. I can't really read it, but he's literally like writing a press release. <laughs> Someone else tried to zoom in too. <laughs> That's funny. Let me close some of this stuff. I'm on my old laptop, so you hear the fan. It's not exactly a great laptop, but it gets the job done. Literally, was trying to turn this off. I hate, I hate the technology. Um, HMBL is my weekend play. No, I mean, HMBL is up a little bit, but I think it's just because it just got destroyed so much. Um, you know, it's, it's not something that I would, you know, really want to do, but you know, I'm, I'm looking at it. The news is George Sharp like rejoined. So, you know, that might be something, but it's not exactly like the, the best catalyst. And then IGEX, where they're writing something positive, you know, not exactly like, oh my God, I got to be in this annoying sub penny play where they're writing, you know, something positive. That's not exactly the strongest. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have a weekend play. I don't always have a weekend play. You know, DGLY I'm watching for potential civil unrest uh, because of, you know, the, the trial that just happened in Wisconsin. Um, but it's already also up and, you know, I, I, I don't have a good history of betting on civil unrest. Um, not only do I, I, you know, I don't want civil unrest. I don't want people to get hurt. So I don't, I don't necessarily like those kinds of trades. But at the same time, also, it's just a little, uh, it's a little difficult. So I don't need anything, you know, to trade if there's nothing great. Um, I see LGVN, you know, spiked up big this morning and it's come down. So maybe that could come back. I saw LICH had a big spike today, but it's come down. Um, I see LITM had a big spike, but that's come down. I see RGSG uh, had a big spike, but this one's come down. You know, like there's, there's a, a clear and definitive trend where, you know, you have these big spikers, but then they come down. So... OSCI failed on day two and in the bounce failed uh, RETO, which so many of you are like, this is the play because this was a multi-day runner, right? So RETO fits my pattern, but it's just not bouncing. And sometimes that happens. Um, I took a small gain on RETO, but there really hasn't been that good of a, a panic or a bounce. News on MJWL and nobody cares. I mean, what you have to understand is that these companies are always going to have news, but they need the, the promoters. You know, ILUS had similar news the other day, and it just kept dropping because the promoters aren't doing their job. Why aren't the promoters doing their job? Because right now a promoter just got arrested. So that promoter who's arrested is probably flipping on all the other promoters. So they're, they're probably scared to do their, their typically shady stuff. Kevin said, how come you never traded ENGA? Um, ENGA was a little illiquid for me. You know, I, I've traded a few illiquid names and haven't really done well. Um, this was also a second or even really a third big green day. So I don't like chasing third green days. I was watching it. Um, I was impressed. And then I was, you know, I, I said in chat, I'm looking for a panic. And we didn't really get a panic. You know, we got like this, this choppy consolidation. So... I can't chase it because it's already the third green day and I can't dip by it because I didn't get the panic. Does that make sense? 
Jay Gata says, yeah, on ILUS, thanks for getting Backstreet Boys. Yeah, I, I linked the Backstreet Boys song, Quit Playing Games With My Heart. There were so many people who thought that uh, ILUS was, was going to break out. I saw like Jack Aru. He was, he was like, today's the day. And I'm just like, you guys are dreaming. Like ILUS is such a piece of crap. The promoters are pieces of crap. Um, and now ILUS is down 30% from, you know, from when I was warning about it. So I was pretty happy to warn about it. I wanted to spike. I wanted to break out. It just didn't have the price action. Is FORW news anything? I didn't even see. What was the news on FORW? You know, that's another George Sharp type play. So maybe I'll watch it. But it's tough when you get like these these kinds of people involved where, okay, maybe it's it's something, maybe it's not. It's just not definitive enough for me. I don't need to make a trade if I don't see anything like perfect. Surfing Wave says you were so on for ILUS. Yeah, I was. And I feel bad because I know a lot of my top students, like Huddy was in big, Jack was in big. I think Dom was in big. Hopefully they cut their losses or took small profits. But just because, you know, some big traders want it to go up, just because you want it to go up doesn't make it go up. And, you know, it really reminds me of KBLB, which I said in an earlier video lesson. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what's playing out so far. Nice bounce on DGLY, someone says. I mean, it's plus or minus like five or ten cents. <laughs> it's not really a nice bounce. It's not really nice anything. Yeah, FORW holds HMBL warrants. So, I mean, it's, it's like all related to George Sharp and their warrants. I, that's, you know, George Sharp is not one of my, uh, one of my catalysts to buy, you know, he's not a billionaire. If you get like a billionaire involved, then, then I'm like, yeah, I'm excited. Cause then it's like E L E K part two. I just moved Pascal. Is, am I still on camera? Is it okay? When you watch this video, leave a comment below the video saying, if there's nothing great, you don't have to trade. That's the reality. So many of you are just looking for trades all the time, you know? Someone says, L-I-C-H, nice bounce. I mean, a little bit. The volume is weak, and we've seen this, you know, on a lot of plays. So I'm not thrilled about L-I-C-H. I'm not thrilled about anything. And that's why I'm glad to not have any, you know, positions. Remember, I think of myself as a retired trader. I'm only going to come out of retirement if there's something that's so good, I would feel guilty missing it. Emmett says, I'm wondering, is Tim still talking about his weekend play for HMB? HMBL is not my weekend play, okay? Just because you guys are saying it's my weekend play does not make it so. Fetch is never going to happen, so stop it. When ELEK spiked up, didn't it fit your first Green Day pattern? Why did you say in your video you wouldn't long it overnight because it's too risky? Because, again, right now, you don't want to be too aggressive in this market. We're seeing some runners. By all means, we're seeing some one-day runners. We're not seeing that many two-day runners. Um, and the best time to buy on day two is usually on a morning panic. So... If you were long ELEK overnight, I mean, it did gap up into day two, but for like 10 seconds. And when it didn't run, that created the morning panic where the best opportunity was. So you got to adapt to the market. Some of you want this to be an exact science. Some of you just want to memorize a pattern from years ago and not adapt to the new environment. That's your mistake. What a reference. You like my Mean Girls reference? It's just true. It's just funny where, where so many are like, people are literally like suggesting like, oh, how's your HMBL weekend play? I never said that, you know? I, just because you say it doesn't make that mean that that's going to be my weekend play. I don't think I've ever bought a stock where I'm like, oh, this kind of, you know, interesting character, you know, like 
I'm, and I'm blocked. I think George Sharp even blocked me. Like, I don't even know what he's saying. Um, but he gets involved with these companies and he's involved with like a lot of different penny stocks and they, they pop for like a day or two, but not much more. He's not a billionaire. It's not a, an ELEK type catalyst for me. HMBL is just oversold. And like the whole HMBL army is like, look, we're back. You know, maybe they try to pump it up, but and this is just not a great chart for me to buy or a great catalyst. So I wish you luck, but it ain't for me. Uh, Trader Carlos says, took a loss on RETO, 11 a.m. bounce, 198 to 194. Not everything has to bounce. Yeah, I mean, listen, there was a little opportunity. Mark Crook made a little money on RETO on the 11 a.m. bounce. Um, I think he took it from like 195 to like 205. There just wasn't much on that. You know, so we're, we're seeing like these one day runners, but really like the, the best things that have been working are, um, you know, morning panic dip buys into these runners like ELEK. That was my best trade of the week um, where I took it from basically seven ish or six ish to the sevens. Um, and it was quick and it went to the eights. I underestimated it. But um, just not that much going on. You know, I saw GGPI. Okay, that had a strong first green day and then it finished, finished strong and then it gap strong. But after that, not much. It's really tough to try to fit in like good trades when when you're not seeing this many multi-day runners you know even Rito, which when it was up like multiple days in a row it was very choppy there was no like definitive strength it was kind of like watching the new york giants win the super bowl when we sucked and yes we beat the patriots so ultimately we got the trophy but it was just like frustrating to watch i'm a lifelong new york giants fan it's very difficult for me to watch we're not like dominant ever, you know, like even when the Patriots lose in the Super Bowl, they're still dominant all season. If you ask me, what would you rather have? Would you want a, a dominant team all season long for many months at a time and you feel amazing? Or do you want to be dominant just in the Super Bowl? Not even dominant, lucky in the Super Bowl, put together like a good game and like a crazy helmet catch. And you, you, you win the ultimate trophy, but all season long, it's been frustrating. I would prefer to be dominant all season long and lose in the Super Bowl. Which would you like? I'm curious. Type in uh, D for dominant or SB for Super Bowl. Because obviously the New York Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So technically the Giants were the best team that year. But... I think we were, what, 9-7, and seven, and the, the Patriots were like 16-0. and 0. I would have preferred to go 16-0 and 0 and then lose in the Super Bowl. That's just me. There's no one right answer. This is a personal preference. You see, look at this. We got some people with the Super Bowl. We got like half for the Super Bowl and half for dominant. Yeah, American football, not European football. We're not talking about, you know, people who, who like, they hurt their fingernail and then they go down on the, the field for 20 minutes, writhing in pain. Oh, he caught my fingernail. Come on. American football. We're talking about broken bones, like disgusting injuries. These are like the gladiators of our time. Yeah, I mean, look at this. The answers are split. I think we have like 15 or 20 people so far for the Super Bowl and like 15 or 20 people for dominant. I don't care about winning. Listen, it was fantastic to win the last game. It was fantastic to win in the playoffs. But sometimes it's just nice to be dominant, right? You Pats fans, you're used to dominance all the time. Even now, even you don't even have Brady anymore. And somehow you still find a way to be dominant with a new rookie quarterback. It's amazing. Sal Trade says, as a Pats fan, I'd rather have won that Super Bowl. You're wrong. You're spoiled, Sal. You win the Super Bowl almost every year. You don't need another Super Bowl. How many Super Bowls have you won? Five, six, seven? I can't even count that high. 
UFC is, is a crazy sport too. I went to one UFC event. I went to, um, what was his name? Aldo. Aldo versus McGregor. It was like, a, not the first one. I think it might've been the second one or the third one. It was, thir- it was the 13 second fight. And I had never been to a UFC thing. It was actually in Vegas. Um, I'm in Vegas right now for, I'm speaking at a conference by the way. Um, but it was here in Vegas and I just felt the energy of the crowd and I was like filming it and I had pretty good seats. And so I was like filming the whole arena behind me when it started. And literally I didn't even see the guy go down because it was 13 seconds. By the way, art of war is in here. I don't know if you guys know this, but art of war is a former Patriot. He played in the NFL. Ellis, he's an amazing Patriot. He had an amazing, uh, you know, career and in special plays. Like I think it was like a 101 yard run back, which was like the longest run back. So pretty crazy with, with art of war being in here, former NFLer. everyone congratulate art of war on his NFL career. And now his success as a trader, he took what he learned, you know, as an athlete and he applied it. Yeah, man, many of you guys didn't even know that it's pretty cool. We have some, some really special people here in the, the challenge chat room. And it's a lot of it is just due to, you know, work ethic. Ellis is successful because of work ethic. Kyle is here because of work ethic. Jack Schwartz, number seven, work ethic. Tim Lento, work ethic. Mark Crook, work ethic. Like it's, uh, and many more. I mean, I'm just pointing out a few moderators, but that's how you get really good. Not just guessing, you know, I don't think HMBL is a terrible weekend trade. You know, it, it might keep going, um, especially just given how, how far it's down. But I just don't know about it, you know, given the, uh, given the catalyst. The catalyst is kind of weak for me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see how it closes. I'm not I'm not saying 100%, but so far it doesn't look like anything great for me. Look at this. Ellis doesn't even understand. He's like, "What's going on?" Uh, let's see. Jay Gata says, I wasn't going to mention it, but AOW was on the field during that Super Bowl you were talking about in the Tyree catch. Watch the replay. Sorry, Ellis. Yeah. Oh, I, I knew that. So I didn't. Thank you for bringing that up. Actually, Ellis was notoriously guarding Plexico Burris uh, when he caught the game winning touchdown. So there's there's multiple things going on here. Plexico also was one of my students. Uh, for a short period of time, although he just didn't, he didn't really take to penny stock trading, but he was a really nice guy. Small world, right? We got, you know, a great NFL Patriots player here. We got the, you know, the catch that secured my Super Bowl. It was pretty cool. What's this YouTube video? What am I clicking? Oh, this is Ellis Hobbs. This is Art of War. So you're going to watch his, his run back. Look at this. This is Art of War right here. Go, baby, go, 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 go. You can do it, Ellis. He could go all the way. Look at this. From the back of the end zone. More than 101 yards. I think it's like 110 yards. I don't even know. That's pretty awesome. This is Art of War. So next time you you talk to Art of War, show him a little more respect.
pretty cool, right? Yeah, now look at this. Now everyone, everyone's like, oh my God, I had no idea. And now he's nailing PROG. Exactly. So whether he's returning, uh, you know, kickoff returns or nailing PROG. And I think he also was like coaching like a, a little league game or something today, he said earlier. It's all about excellence. It's all about work ethic. None of this happens you know, due to luck. You're not going to return a, a kickoff in the NFL due to luck. And I'm excited to see what more, you know, Ellis can do. He's a little over 400,000. If he sticks with it, stays dedicated, he'll be over a million too. Props also to several new um, almost millionaire students. Um, you know, there's no rush. There's literally no rush whatsoever, but um, Chris and, uh, Evan Shunk are at like seven and 800,000, uh, two brothers. And I think it was Chris who taught Evan or Evan who taught Chris. I don't know. Evan taught Chris. So we did a video with them. Pretty awesome. Um, and they're, you know, closing in on a million. Ali all was on closing in, uh, on a million Bryce closing in on a million. Um, and there's somebody else who's closing in. Oh, Paul Delgado is closing in on a million. He's at like 850,000. So we got like five students knock, knock, knocking on $1 million door. Um, and it's going to be pretty cool, you know? So props to them. Again, there's no, no pressure. Um, when I was talking with Evan and Chris, when I interviewed them, there's a long video that we did, but I was like, don't force it. I, once upon a time, I went to Tim Grittani's house in Ohio to try to film him when he was about to cross a million, and he ended up losing like 50 grand because he was trying to force it for me and the cameras, and I felt terrible. So I never did that again. <laughs> you live, you learn. You know, I was excited. And now Tim Grittani's over 13 million. I'm actually going to see him uh, next week. Pretty cool. 